lot of people like want a golf course to be bright green. But it's, it's you're just, you know, you're, why? It doesn't make it play any better. Just, you know, some people like to look at it. Everyone used to always ask us, Do you guys gonna paint them? You gonna oversee? No. Come over here. Why masquerade, right? Enjoy the brown. Chest on my chest I will wait on your border Until you will let me in Alright, so we are awake, it's on time. My watch says that it's 8.45. My phone says it's 8.45. My computer says it's 7.45. The true time is somewhere in between there. We're like on the cusp of multiple time zones. And in fact, it was actually really confusing at some point last night to determine what time we were supposed to wake up. We texted Brad Klein who ranked Sweetens Cove above Valhalla, and what other uh, banger? Quail Hollow. Uh, with an asterisk because it's only a nine hole course. Ooh, it's a bright one today. Have a good day. There you go. All right, first looks out here. Sweetens Cove. What's How's up, dude? Going? Good to meet you, man. You How too. you been? Doing yeah, good. It's hard with the club. No there. worries. You doing well? Easy drive for you. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Just straight down the interstate. There he is. Good morning. How you doing? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, bud. How are you? Good. You been good? Zach Radford. Hey, Zach. How are you? <laughs> this is great. Tad and I met at uh, Akbar's event, right? Yep. At uh, Winter Park, another famous nine hole. Yeah. Is this, con is this, con is it nine? It's nine holes. It is nine, nine holes, yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't know that until like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> We've got two pin placements on every hole, so you're able to play nine to one pin and then play it again to okay. another pin. So it's pretty cool. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Ben's just like, I'm going to show up and just, wait, how far away do you live? I live in Chattanooga. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Yeah. Oh, not bad. I got a loose loose hours oh, this week. So. <laughs> what do you do? What gives I'm you a minister, so I um, okay. actually had to take the day off. You are like, the Lord said, I'm yeah. good. This is the spiritual experience. So. It is. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, any any uh, rules at Sweetens that we should be uh, wary of? Uh, first timers, take a shot of whiskey. You've got a lot of room out here off the tee. Corridors are very wide, lots of movement on the ground. Golf course plays firm and fast. We've got over 100,000 square feet of green space, very little of which is flat. There is no rough out there. Everything is fairway height around the greens. You can roll it, you can bump it, you can pitch it. More times than not, you're better off rolling it than trying to do really anything else. Really just have fun. This is just a giant playground. It's a 72 acre playground. Let's You're play. Welcome. I'm ready when you guys are. Should we cruise? Everybody Bird, ready? ready? Birdie's ready. Let's do this. So a guy actually died there. Where? Right there. Wait, a guy died right here? Right, right there. Doing the what? Do the headstone. Woody. Guy hit his approach onto the green, asked if he hit the green, and they turn around and he had a heart attack and dropped dead there. So. So his last words were, did I hit the green? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see it. I'm pumped. So you're the uh, you're the hand of God. What? Is that what you call yourself? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I make everyone call me. Yeah, something like that. No, I, there's a lot of talented people who 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 had a hand in this place and who believed in it. And 
Um, the fact that it's made it is pretty f***ing amazing. We have struggled mightily um, for the last five years to get get to where we are now. And um, well, and, and, and I mean, I, I can go back to 2011, 2012 in the construction. I mean, the fact that this place even exists exists is a miracle on the many levels. This seems to be, from my understanding, is where you go if you're interested in true architectural golf without any of the uh, kind of, in a new course, without any of the um, kind of Bullshit. trappings of golf that, <laughs> yeah. that that shun a lot of people that are just interested in the grass. That, you know, that's what we were, were forced into just because we were, the only thing we could do was spend money on the, on the golf course. My goal in, in designing and helping to build it was to build nine architecturally stimulating, unique golf holes. That was all that mattered to me. Did you work at Sand Valley? No, I bought this one. I went up there a couple of years ago. Because are you aware that Brad Klein rated Sweetens Cove above Sand Valley? Well, I saw that on the, it was in the, the first golf week ranking that we were on. Yeah. I saw that. That was pretty wild. I would be lying if I said I didn't pay attention to it. I mean, I do. Um, it, it matters a lot for Sweetens Cove because there is, let's face it, still a, a, a stigma about nine hole golf courses and to be legitimized by a ranking is, is well known and is well done as the golf week ranking. It tells you that this is a legitimate place. How often do you walk through a bunker to get to a tee? Interesting. Good swing, go. Nash. Yeah, oh. talk to him. Hang on. Is it one versus the other? You say no. <laughs> you say no. <laughs> <laughs> and the history of kind of how length and what would you say, accuracy mm -hmm. right. potentially, yeah. basically have been battling it out and how the golf industry as a whole has been basically purporting this to be better I mean, I enjoy both. I mean, for me, this is, like I was saying earlier, I grew up playing with this. Like, I, I get a thrill out of going out and playing with this equipment. I play with this, I play with blades, I'll play with Bellotta. I appreciate the craftsmanship and the work that goes into it and how it's different from a lot of other things that are made. But I really enjoy how, they're, I enjoy how they play. I mean, I, the other thing is, I say this all the time, is these are tools, they're not jewels. Like, you're taking this out, I'm gonna beat the hell out of this thing. When it's done, I'm gonna send it off, I'm gonna get it refinished, it's gonna come back and I'm gonna beat the hell out of it some more. Is this Shinagawa's? No, these are National Customs. So this is what my company makes. So these start from a raw head that's got about 150 grams of excess weight. All the lines in this muscle are cut by hand. We can shape the toe however you want. We shape the bottom of the sole to whatever you need, depending on your angle of attack, your tendencies, your conditions, your preferences. And uh, yeah, so that's what we make. And um, Tad brought this up. He saw my new edges. Yeah. And he said, oh, those are made by, and who made them? Oh, Mike Taylor, Artisan. Mike Taylor. Yeah. So that blew me away, because yeah. here I'm coming away from the kingdom. Yeah. And I have I have some custom clubs. Yeah. I have some hand-built clubs from different people. And, you know, obviously coming away from the kingdom, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll get these wedges. They look kind of weird. The big high toe. I, I had that conversation the other day. It's like, it's hilarious to me that like the I2 is now like a classic because they're making, like, it's just yeah, so similar where you got that really high toe. Basically modeled after the ping I2. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of curve in the, the top line doesn't have a lot of curve. It's pretty straight. Toe's really nice and high. But Mike Taylor, an artisan is the word you used. Yeah. To that's design his, my his, tailor-made way. That's his business. His artisan, it's called Artisan Golf. They're the only other guys that do what we do. That's so that's awesome. what we have here, Tad is showing us a little <laughs> bit of uh, Right and wrong. So this is the right tee to use. Yeah, it's appropriate for Hickory Golf. So that you could wouldn't lose your tee because back then tees were you know hard to come by. I guess you know expensive. So they put a little tassel on a string on it. I love it. Isn't that cool? Riser, but that was pretty I have good. A lot in my bag. Oh my goodness! That was see pretty this. good. Yeah, here this is a 384 Ooh. 200. This sucker is going to spin to the moon. Let, I want to see this. I've this actually never hit one of these before. Oh boy. <laughs> this is an actual Bellata. Yeah. 35 year old golf ball. Yeah. Inside of it is rubber bands. Yeah, and a, uh, there's a core that's full, full of liquid in the middle of it. 
What a great sound. I actually hit that really good. Yeah. <laughs> Contact on the face there, it was so soft. That is how it's supposed to feel. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Eric Anders Lang Show. Where do we start? You guys, first of all, you're almost matching. Tan pants, blue sweaters. It's a good look. Are you saying that essentially people should be playing hickories? Oh, I think people would love to play hickories. And hickories is a great game. And people that find it actually help them play better with their modern golf clubs. You know, more to Tad's point with playing with hickories and in that style of golf, it's more about hitting shots versus hitting numbers. You're not trying to fly this 140 yards. You're looking at this, you know, you're looking at this spot. You want the ball to hit and go forward or something beyond the pin that's going to bring it back. It's just, it's a different type of golf. You're not, you know, you're not obsessing about flying at a certain number or hitting a certain number. You're going to take this club. You're going to hit this shot with it. You, you know, he's saying about his mash sheets. You know, it doesn't really matter. If you've got all these shots, you know, you can hit with that club. That's more important than knowing, you know, when I swing this club full, it goes 170 yards. Mm. I mean, I can hit it 140 and do this with it. I can hit it 150 and do this with it. That's more that style of golf. And I think a lot of people would really appreciate and enjoy it because it, it is very different. It is a very different game. And the clubs react differently. They play differently. They're more alive. That was the most real podcast that's ever been of any podcast. There's 600,000 podcasts. That is the most real of anyone's. All right. So now we make our way to the ninth hole, which is also, what is it? Come on. You know what it is. I love number nine. It's a... Uh combination of a redan and a short hole a lot of hole in one somebody's gonna hit a hole in one right now the other thing about here is you can kind of claim your pin in the air yeah since we have <laughs> since we have That's two right. pins on the green yeah, we've we can, got two pins now you got you got twice as many chances right pin or left pin? left pin left oh, pin that's a secret left. unto yourself absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah that was a hole in one that's what i was aiming at what are you talking about it would be so tragic to get a hole on the wrong so pin bad. that is good. right where you want to be really good Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's what you want. Nice ball. Oh, I was aiming at that flag, I swear. <laughs> Great to meet you, man. Thanks for making it. A lot of fun. Thank you, yeah. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I got my tan and blue outfit. Am I supposed to be in this photo or I just jump in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Well, that's the end of our complete round of nine holes at Sweetens Cove. And it's good to see golf alive and well with people like Patrick and Crew and Nash and Rob taking care of this place and making it something that, I, from what he said, was going to close. So what I was saying is like me and Robin talked about this a lot over the years is like I think this this transcends that label of being nine holes or really any holes. I think it's the experience is what it is. And to me and Rob and people that really know this place, there's, I don't know, 70 holes out there. If you yeah, know where you're exactly. looking and where you're going, I will sheepishly admit that I was one of those guys. I was like nine holes. Yeah. I'm We're going out, here. out of yeah. the yeah. way I'm for coming, nine I'm coming out in the middle of nowhere to see nine holes the whole problem is that it's perceived as as 18 holes but you know you get out of here and you play nine and it's it's so different you don't have to have 18 what's the rule behind that now we have double pins we have dogs I mean, <laughs> you know you know screw the rules i mean make it fun yeah that yeah. prestige factor that has golf by the balls is something we've let go of and that's what I like. It's fun. <laughs>